Hello, this is Free Little on the Free Little Talk with Mr. Lloyd Abraham Grayson. We're going to try this interview again. We hope that everyone can hear us. Please, in your uh, in the thread, go ahead and put that you can hear us or not. We want to make sure that everyone can hear us. Yo, we're doing a sound check right now. Can you hear sound us check now? One, two, three. <laughs> it's good to have fun. And go on with telling my followers to join your video. Okay. okay. Tell us that. Well, all right, here. Nobody heard that shit. This is so funny. Never had this issue, but wow. That's why I say this it is must really be it must be. Yeah, you know, attacks don't come to me. Yeah. What? Yes. That's well, all right. right. All right now. We're going to be moving on up. Yes, it's always an upgrade up. Oh, you know, you want to make sure that y'all can see yes. what it says. What's stirring? This is his brand. Have we started? Yes, we're live. Somebody's on? We're live. If you're on, please say hello so we can know that you hear us. Yeah, I'm going to make sure that you can hear us because this is an amazing artist. He is a poet. He is congratulations to him for winning the Lily Mayrian Learning and Transformation Center Virtual Showcase Contest. First place for his amazing poetry with Jack Johnson. In honor of Jack Johnson, he did an amazing video. And he's speaking about Jack Johnson, dropping a little wisdom and knowledge on you and some insight that many do not have concerning Jack Johnson. So without further ado, Mr. Bobby Wilson, share with us. Um, I was inspired to write about Jack um, by way of my guy, Matt Stanford. And, um, Rest in peace, man. He had written a play back in um, 2005. Well, he, he actually wrote the play years prior to that, and he put the finishing touches on it in 2004, if I'm not mistaken. And... Um, he inspired me to learn a little bit more about Jack. Mm -hmm. You know, Jack Johnson. The Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion who is from Galveston. And just knowing, just finding that out and knowing that he was from Galveston, it was like, how can I share this message mm -hmm. of, of where he's from and, uh, and a little bit of his life yes. that I wasn't even aware of so that, you know, creatively people could kind of gravitate to it and want to go find out more about him and also find out about find more about where he was from yes find and, out more um, about galveston texas so that's it was several things that actually inspired me to write that that particular piece so share with the audience a little bit about where jack johnson kind of landed some of his roots i think you said chicago and yeah galveston. he was in chicago um in chicago he had the first integrated nightclub wow. um and he was an ambassador for actually the United States to European countries. And you know, uh before they got tired of him, they also created the Man Act, which was the first act ever of its kind created specifically specifically for him yes. because of mutual affections for Anglo women. Yes. So yeah, it's, it's his journey is quite interesting. He's an inventor. You know, um, he was charismatic, charming, you know. He, I mean, if you see old pictures of him, mm -hmm. I have, like, I found, like, a really great old picture of him, man. And he had this go-to. <laughs> no, I, I had got it off on, online, so I hadn't okay. had a chance to download it yet. But um, he had a go-to, man. Wow, and you wouldn't man. think back then, you know, this is the turn of the century up until the mm -hmm. 1920s. And for someone, a person of color, to be making that kind of money then. Yes. You so know. Jack Johnson's an interesting individual, a real life person, not a character in Absolutely. a movie or a story that you have, will ever hear about. He really lived and existed and grew up where? Galveston, Texas, baby. Wow. And he did a great thing. So kind of tell us a little bit about his history that you learned in your studies. In my studies, um, let's see. It was a, he's, um, oh, I found out recently. I, I had, and this is crazy. Mm. Okay. Not in Texas history, you know, not as I can recall in elementary school or ne nor even high school. I actually found out after high school about Jack Johnson and, mm. um, you know, coming to find out about him I, just recently. I want to say in the last two or three years, 
Um, and I tried to get it. I think I did in, in the video get his the house that he grew up in. It's located on wow. 29th and Avenue K, right there on wow. the corner on 29th and K. And wow. it's one of those places that haven't been historically recognized by the state of Texas nor by the mm. city of Galveston, you know. Interesting. It also took the city a while to actually acknowledge him in the statue that was built at mm -hmm. Old Central, which is the first black high school in the state of Texas. Um, and Galveston itself as a community has many firsts in the state yes. of Texas. Yes, So just as far as Jack, you know, he invented what they call the monkey wrench, but it's just a wrench. <laughs> um, I didn't know he was a horse trainer. He yes, I, I, I did learn that I about that. him. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. None of those things that I ran across throughout, you know, studying those things about him, mm -hmm. you know. But awesome guy. Nevertheless, it's still impressive. And so that inspired you to write more about his life and to compose this amazing poetry that is so well put together with all of his life with different locations throughout Galveston of what brings you to know him. Right. Like we have an historical park in his in his, in honor. his honor. A Absolutely. street name in, in his, his honor. honor. So that right there is inspiring. So you are a mentor. Yes, I um I mentor still currently. Um it's funny two young men that I started mentoring their uh senior year. They just reached out to me. They both are um, MCs and, and brilliant mm -hmm. writers, brilliant, brilliant musicians. And they have so many, they are so multifaceted, these yes. kids, man. And they just reached out to me a week ago and said that they were looking forward to being mentors. So Jordan Welch, wow. Terrell Franklin, many Shout blessings out. to you. Um, young Captain and J.A.Y., go check them guys out on YouTube um, and some of the other uh, social media platforms mm -hmm. to listen to their music. Those guys are really, they're really good. They're from Galveston, man. And I, I really, really sense and feel like they're really going to do great things, not just with the music, but they, they just got a genuine good spirit and really good kids, man. So I love hearing that. God, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's and I'm on just as much as, you know, I was looked at as a mentor. I've learned so much from them as well. And that's kind of the thing that inspired me to be a mentor because you're always learning from someone and you know that young breath of fresh air those innovative wow. ideas that they may come up with and instead of trying to hoard it or take those ideas for myself i always you know look forward to nurturing it within them and inspire encouraging them to follow through for themselves hmm. and that's that's great wisdom so with that being said your next project is Men, uh, mentorship or is it poetry? It's both. I, right. I it's, it's like a simultaneous <laughs> thing. You know what I mean. If I wanted to get away, get away from one to do the other, you know, the Most High is not going to allow that. Man. I love it. I can't get away from it even if I tried. So, because I actually mentored through my poetry. Through your you poetry. Know? So you know, when like matter of fact, uh, tomorrow, uh, February, uh, what is that? Oh my God, I'm tripping. The seventeenth. Yeah, February 17th. Thursday. Thursday, February 17th at 7 p.m. at the Proletariat located on 23rd and Market. Galveston. Uh, shouts out to the two other co-founders of, of that that space. It actually was brought to my attention a few years back by Tassie Woolridge, my okay. poetic sister of apotheosis epidemic. And, um, and then a young man, Miles, a legendary gentleman, is his stage name, and um, you know we sat down, and I believe in 2017, mm. you know we started doing poetry there, and you know several young men and several young women have kept, since kept it going, and yeah. now myself and my fellow bro, my my fellow brother in, in the art of being a bard, <laughs> um, Jesus the microphone bounty hunter, uh. aka my classmate great friend Eddie Grogan you know we're gonna start oh, assisting with the yes. we're gonna start helping with the hosting and get back in the swing of you know reinvigorating Galveston poetry so I like AC you know and definitely a shout out again to my guy Matt Stafford because we started with Matt in 2000 and he introduced poetry you know just at St. Vincent's house we just kind of got together you know Mona Danny you yeah. know what I mean so 
Yeah, you know, and just, left a legacy, right? you left a legacy, man. And, yeah. you know, it's just like any legacy, you know, is he started with the foundation. He laid the concrete and it was a solid foundation. And we just came and added the walls. And now the goal is to continue to build from there. So how much influence would you say that Matt, Matthew Stanford had on you regarding your desire in the arts? A lot, man. Now, you know, that no one's ever asked me in that way. Um, you know, I went into the arts because I know it's my purpose. Mm -hmm. That's good. So it starts <laughs> there, you know what I mean? But at the time, it was like Matt had started creating a platform. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, and shout out to, to my theater mom, Irma Phillips. <laughs> you know, Irma Phillips did a play back on in, in Juneteenth of, of 1999. That was the first ever full stage production that I had ever done. And Matt, that was the first play he ever directed. I recall so, his plays, yes. You know, he directed that. Miss Irma wrote that, you know what I mean? And from there, Matt got into playwriting, you know, and, and, and him giving me the opportunity to get on stage, you know, and, and do a lot of his productions. and. You know, for, and even the honor of him bouncing ideas off of me, you know what I mean? So he, he created a foundation, man, and, you know, just looking to continue to, to promote it and to perpetuate it and take it to the next level and, and to leave it for young men and young women to come. Pardon me. <laughs> this interview is so funny because hey, right? it has been so many interruptions of this. But we would we'd like to know if anyone, okay. if you're able to hear right now, us, bro, we just want to make right sure that we can continue phone, with bro. the flow of right. interviewing Mr. Lord Abraham Grayson, known as Bobby Wilson, that is his name, and he is an amazing poet, he's an actor, he's an activist, he is someone that is community Founded, he's rooted in the community, and he desires to give back to the community. That's important. So, with that being stated, your your acting. Um, make sure I'm not tripping. Uh, that's all right. It is okay. But that phone call came through. That anyway. phone came through anyway, y'all. <laughs> it's okay. It's crazy, but um. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my acting, I started acting um, just by happenstance. I started writing poetry in 96. Wow. I had always been accredited for being a, a good writer, you know, and that I should take it more seriously, but who wants to be a writer? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I wasn't thinking about that, you know, at kid time. from the hood at the time, no. you know, grew up in Cedar Terrace. Well and, you writing, know, trust me. Wasn't even thinking of that. You know, I didn't have anybody saying, you know, if an instructor told my mother that, and she wasn't thinking, oh, wow, I'm a writer, you know, who thinks of that? And that's not how our people were conditioned anyway. It wasn't like to do something like writing or even pursue the arts for, you know, as a life, mm -hmm. had to make a living through the arts, you know, no one right. really encourages that. So, no, nah, not a writer, you know, not especially poetry, you know what I mean? But it took Miss meeting Miss Irma to, and, and, you know, attending Galveston College and Dr. Taylor now, who, you know, challenged us to write a poem, and that's the first time I had ever written a poem. Wow. You know what I mean? It was '96, and and from there, it's like the pen wouldn't stop writing. The pen would that is so well. The pen what does the word say? Writing. The pen of a ready writer. Wow, it we we write our this. We, we, yeah, we truly do. We truly do. Yeah. So, with that being stated, with the inspiration of all these individuals that he names, and that's I love the servant spirit that he has on him because it's always giving acknowledgement to the foundation. That that right there is kingdom. When you can acknowledge who raised you up, who poured into you, and now you're doing the same thing. That is amazing. He's pouring into others, and now he has this drive and desire to still maintain that same spirit that was taking time. Somebody took time somebody with you. Somebody took time. You know, somebody took time. Some, several somebody's and took gave time an opportunity. with them. And gave me an opportunity you know, and gave me an opportunity. And that, that was huge for me, mm. you know, at that time, because I was going through like a, a young adult midlife crisis because I had, all I had known leading up to that point was I wanted to teach history. And I hadn't mm. even started substitute teaching. I was only um, 
a year and a half from getting my bachelor's. So it was, mm, you know, it was things were going great in that arena. But I just woke up one morning and realized that I didn't want to do it as a career. Yeah. You know, mentoring no, <laughs> and enjoying, you know, helping young men or young women find their path and, and, and walk in their purpose. Absolutely, to this day, even some adults with my peers, you know, to this day. But as far as a career, I I feel like it, it didn't allow those instructors to really pour into those children the things mm -hmm. that was necessary for them to be as productive that they possibly true and truly could be. So, and I, I, I was so lost. How important is lost. it to you to really reach someone with, through the arts? Um, you know, it's crazy. It's funny how you ask that question. Like, <laughs> it's important, but it's not. Okay. It's my, it's, it's our responsibility to share, mm -hmm. but it's up to you of whether or not you're going to receive it. That is true. Now, that's so, wisdom. You, you're good. Some people don't catch that. I that, can that share. The responsibility of the person that's being set up to receive the blessing. See, I don't, I don't want to be a pers person that's closed and I can't receive what, I, I don't know that door. Someone says, I want you to meet Bobby Wilson. I don't want to miss the opportunity to meet Bobby Wilson because Bobby Wilson may be the prayers I'm praying to God that help me, Father, do this. Show me how to do this. Get this door open to me. So with that, I'm leading into, how did you feel when you found out you were the winner? of the contest and Danny Simmons admired your work and said hands down he's the winner well thank you again to <laughs> Lily May Ren Learning and Transformation, and Transformation Center Transformation Foundation yes Foundation um and big shout out to Mr. Danny Simmons um thank you Danny I'm honored I I was just honored it was it was no words you know um you, you, you work so hard at what you not only are purpose to do, but what you really love to do. And, and again, for me, the accolades are beautiful and wonderful and great. But to know that you're walking in your purpose and, yes. and people are taking notice to it. You know what I mean? And people are being impacted by yes. it. Yes, yes. Now that makes a difference. That's, that, that, that's, that's huge, you know, and that's, that's what really really touched my heart in, in being the winner is that mm -hmm. someone of his stature is yes. of his status and notoriety throughout the world throughout the world danny simmons actually enjoys something i wrote you know yeah and and cool. amazing artist I, I love to feature his artist his artistry on my page he's he's it's it's not anything that you can just say this is his set standard every time there's something he creates it's different yeah. And it's unique in its own way. So to have that person that, and that no, no, notoriety, exactly. that status, and that look family. At your work in the family. Right. You know, you're talking about yeah. Russell Simmons' older brother. Run the run DMC run older DMC. brother. Like, the bloodline is rich. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he is not your work. And literally. Yeah. <laughs> All of the above. All of the above. But Daddy's such a cool dude. He really is. He's just one of those laid back guys that, you know, you call him on the phone and Danny's. He's, he's he who he, he is who he is. He's just really a good person, and that was the, that's what he told me. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's he the said thing, that like, to me, hands down. He's the winner. Just to have someone, you know, it's it's like it's just like if someone came along and and you know you you just I, I don't know. It's just it's just an excitement, like. Yeah. I try not to get overexcited about things. <laughs> he handled it well. I would have been like, ah! <laughs> you know, I, I try not, yeah, I, I, you know, because it's always to be like, oh, okay, what's the other part of this, right? You know, but I just, I, I, I've learned to handle things, you know, with with more humility, man, and, and just taking it stride, like, okay, cool, that's, that's really dope, man, you know? And, and just keep it moving, and, and hopefully to, to keep steering people in that direction as well like yeah. keep going you know now i'm sure when he got in his bedroom he's by himself the humility was like yes danny Simmons like my work <laughs> 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 you know 
you know, I'm a kaya. <laughs> but no, but it is an honor to spend something you put your heart into, something that you took time to research, and then it's all pieced together, and then you just submit it to a, a con contest. And, you, you know, contests are not, you know, like, I'm a win. You want to win. Yeah. But to hear you won. I don't compete. But because that's your craft. Like, so, exactly. Yes. I all, even within myself, I'm trying to always outdo one of my best performances, mm -hmm. one of my best poems that I feel is one mm -hmm. of my best. You know, someone may feel differently yes. about something they've seen or, or read of mine, you know, or heard me perform, but I always try to go back and outdo the last thing I did. So, you know, to compete, it was just like, eh. It's cool. Yeah, let me just see what's going to happen. It's for free. It's, <laughs> it's for free, but it was for free. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, it, it won't hurt me. And who's it's cool? Who? Let me support her. Thank you. And I appreciate. I had that. something That's to submit. About, yes, you know, let indeed. me support her. I had something to submit. Hey, mm -hmm. let me submit it. Cool. I win. I win. I don't. I don't. But I love Danny's statement. Hands down, he's the winner. And I, and I my, that that made me feel good. I mean, about me every too, comment right? he made, but yeah. but when you know you're the cool. winner and he admires the work, and then he liked the fact that that was historical. Yeah. It was historical foundation facts in a poem. That that's a challenge right there, isn't it? Not. I mean, that's kind of yeah, like it, it was yeah, timing, timing, right? Yeah, timing. Yes. Um, um, most people. Uh, you lose their attention after three minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially in this day and age when every social media is just like so boom, 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 quick, quick. So being able to get it down to just three minutes or just under three minutes and then, you know, shout out to my bro, um, Nathaniel Simmons of NKS yes, Media who yes. did the videography and the editing of that project. Um, and to in that process to, to get it just right as Perfect. far as timing goes because you didn't want I didn't want to lose the audience but I didn't want to oversaturate I didn't want to be too wordy I wanted to give them just enough to where it, it they learned something potentially or it was definitely fact-based um, one of the things yeah. that's like one of my biggest desires as a poet is to have my works studied in in in, in schools to be shared yes, with right. students on the collegiate and, and um, high school levels, mm -hmm. you know, that, and so that was part of the reason that I wrote it that way. It was, you know, working diligently on trying to make sure that the, the wordplay was entertaining enough that I could share it, mm -hmm. you know, in front, of, in front of a crowd, but at the same time that it was educational enough to make someone want to listen and then go research themselves and find out more so that thirst that thirst that thirst yeah. so the goal was to have a thirst for individuals to want more about jack johnson and the the title was catching you don't know jack you don't know jack yeah well, that right and that there was fun. That yeah was fun. That, it, it seemed like it was yeah. it seemed like it was real wordplay real come so what's happening tomorrow night tomorrow night uh 23rd and market the proletariat um, shout out to two of the original founders of that poetry night. Initially, it started on a Tuesday. Um, shout out to Tassie Woolridge, my apotheosis epidemic sister. There's a apotheosis epidemic, by the way, is a poetry troupe that I, myself, Tassie, uh, Anthony Richardson, uh, Donnie Mitchell, and John Anderson uh, founded here in Galveston in 2005, 2006, and and we've been family since, man. So um, that's, that's commendable. So tomorrow night, uh, and also legendary gentlemen also helped to initiate the proletariat. And actually, Miles came to Tassie and myself and asked us, you know, what we thought, and and we we ran with it, and you know, since then we've. We've been able to mentor and help other young men and women to come and to start learning to host. Um, they've been producing on their own. I took a sabbatical. I hadn't been hosting or producing there in the last, let's see, prior to COVID, in the last two years prior to COVID. Yeah. So it just was great to see that there were men and women that stepped up and kept it going. But shout out That's also important. to, again, 2030 Market is known as the Proletariat. Um, they do serve wine. They serve beer as well. They serve craft drinks. Um, you can order food and that's also bringing it into the building. It starts at 7 p.m. 
Um, but thank you again to Becky Major, who is the GM, and also um, Brian and Julie Mahoney. What's up, Vince? So, you know, much shout out to them and much appreciation for them just opening up their spaces because so many people wouldn't even open up their space for us to do this because they, they didn't know what it could do. And thankfully, it's done well, not just for the poets, but it's helped their business as well by having, you know, that type of night here. And then the community itself is something to do in Galveston. So Thursday hopefully people night. take advantage that there is something going every third Thursday night to do. And with you guys' help and with more poets coming out to participate, we'll make it every week. So you guys come out and support. So we appreciate that. At this time, it's every Thursday, every third every Thursday, 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 every third Thursday, the goal is to have it every Thursday night in Galveston, Texas. Absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm really in agreement with you guys because I would like to go somewhere on a Thursday or any other night where I can hear some good poetry Absolutely. and some wordplay because that's amazing. That, yes. that's, that's a, that is a real good craft. Yes, so that means you, it's yes. timing with that and yes. the words have to you know flow. So I like that. Not that I know anything about rapping or poetry, but I mean. Well, it's one and the same. You know, all music, yes. all music actually, for those out there who are writers and, and, and are musicians and such, Y'all know as well as I do, your mm -hmm. your artistry, as far as being a singer-songwriter, you are writing a <clears throat> poem. You know what I mean? It's a lot of my poetry that I actually can turn into either a song or into a rap, if I so okay. decided to. All you rappers out there that are watching, you're writing poetry. Go listen to some of the greats like Biggie and KRS-One and Rakim and Tupac. Yes. They all were mentioning uh, A Ball and A Ball and MJG, MJG. All of them guys mentioned that they were poets. J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, they know Lamar, that they're yes. poets. And, they you know, know, they're just taking it to the next level by adding the mm. instrumentation. So, mm. absolutely. Yes. All music is poetry. So, your mentorship not only was only with the um the young men that you did ah iron man iron man shouts out to Scott, uh man. greg wilson roger russell isaac jackson um my guy uh Ty tyree boyd um ed duncan eddie grogan um so many other the, the twins the the, the rant twins larry and leonard and their mentor blake williams um, mm. Definitely my man C for Sky, Greg Wilson. It's so many gentlemen that have been involved throughout the years and still are. Greg still mentors. I still mentor. Ed, Eddie Elwood Grogan still mentors. Um, and it was just awesome to be able to have that impact on the community at the time when we were really um, strongly more proactive and, and just to be able to hear even years later how many young men and even young women lives that we would help to enrich and have mothers such as free to entrust us with their children you know and trust us to spend time with their children and you know and i hope and pray that whatever we share with their children you know that that they were able to come back and when they got home or maybe years later if not that at that moment that it they could see the change just hanging out, hanging around with either of us have hopefully had in their lives, man. So that was, that's just, it's just always, it just felt good to, to, to give back, man. It, it always feels good. good to give it feels back. good to give yeah. back. It always feels good when you know that you're doing it from your heart yeah. and it's not for a name to be known. Cause you didn't even enter the contest that we had for the foundation as a fundraiser guys for him to receive any funds. He was trying to contribute and trying to help, and I appreciate that. I really do, I, that means a lot, because Absolutely. when we help one another, we don't even understand what that seed is doing. It's beyond just what you sowed. It can open so many doors, and now Danny Simmons knows your name, knows his work, knows his capability. So you never know what's coming down. Start Def Jam, man, invite me up. I would love to never do know it. What's It'll coming be down. freaking amazing, man. <laughs> I want to come to New York, man. Not when it's cold, though, bro. Not when it's cold. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, Danny has a way of doing some great things. Absolutely. His work is so unique. I, I'm I'm in love with his work because I'm always expecting something different. And that's what I love about your work. I've heard more than just uh, you don't know Jack, you know. But that was even catchy. So you got to know the history.